All right, so we've finished running through each of the character focus episodes from early in the series, and we come to the first proper episode of the show. A new villain, and I do mean a new villain, as as far as I can tell, this guy was never in the comics. He was made specifically for the show, known as the Puppet King, is making self-insert Teen Titans fan fiction using his creepy puppets, and has decided that his fan fiction is so good that he needs to go and make it true. And so he sends all of these Teen Titans puppets to the Teen Titans as a gift. And for some reason, they don't think the puppets are creepy and throw them out immediately, which I will never understand. And in fact, play with the puppets and are actually quite good at playing with the puppets, which is weird because playing with puppets is really difficult. And even take the puppets with them to their rooms to sleep, which again, I remind you, these are creepy puppets. They're very creepy looking. This doesn't make sense. And in fact, turns out to be a terrible decision because the Puppet King was hiding in the package that the puppets came in. The puppets themselves were something of a Trojan horse to get him inside the Titan's Tower so that he can use a puppet handle-shaped controller to draw the souls of the Titans out of their bodies one by one in the middle of the night as they sleep and put them into their puppets. And doing so somehow allows him to use the puppet handle shaped controller to control their bodies. So when Starfire and Raven catch on to the fact that something weird is going on and try to fight back, he can have the other three fight against them. His entire plan is he wants to use the Teen Titans and their vast array of powers to control the entire city. Which in and of itself is not a bad plan. But when he tries to extract the souls of Starfire and Raven at the same time after capturing them, Raven is able to cast a spell to stop him, which unfortunately has the unintended side effect of switching their bodies. Yes, this is a classic body switch episode, and in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with that. I like myself a classic body switch episode. And there's certainly good stuff here, most of it right here during this part of the episode. They realize that they are in each other's bodies and are, of course, freaked out by this. And of course, their first thought is to escape the immediate danger, which would have been a lot easier had they had access to their own powers. Raven's powers come from strict control over her emotions. The more in control she is, the more focused she is, and the more able she is to focus her abilities effectively. In this episode, though, we learn that it's pretty much the exact opposite for Starfire's people. They have to feel things deeply in order to use their powers. And so these two are as ill-suited as is possible for using each other's bodies to fight evil. And we get some really great character stuff here, some really great really well-written character interactions here where these two are getting to know each other in the midst of these dangerous situations. They're thrown into this dangerous situation where they have to get to know each other in order to function and survive. And that's great. These scenes between these two characters justify this episode existing. It's just, I keep getting hung up on this villain character. How exactly do his powers work? Does it only work with puppets? Can he only put people's souls into puppets? Or can he put people's souls into anything, but putting their souls into puppets lets him control their original bodies with the remote control? And if that's his specific superpower, then how did he ever figure out that that's his specific superpower? Ceremony? What ceremony? Just a little spell that will destroy you three and make your bodies mine forever. Oh, so now there's magic involved? Has this been magic the entire time? So if this is all magic, then why couldn't he just use a different magic that didn't rely on the puppets that the Titans might have thrown out immediately? Why couldn't he have just used different magic that didn't rely on him sneaking into their tower in a stupid Trojan horse plot that they might have seen through? And now, suddenly, he has a magic which will allow him to destroy the puppets in a certain way so that he keeps control of the bodies? What? Nothing about this guy's abilities are explained and they make no sense. And this isn't like Dr. Light, for example, who is a character who exists in the comics. Like I said, I can't find an instance of this guy in the comics anywhere. So you can't just say, hey, this guy's powers were confusing, I'm gonna go find an example of him in the comics and see if I can figure out more, because he doesn't exist in the comics. I'm sure that there are people who watch this show who are not as bothered by this as I am, but I can't help the fact that this bugs the crap out of me. I don't understand this guy's abilities, they don't make sense, they're never explained, and it takes away from my enjoyment of an otherwise perfectly fine episode. 
Things wrap up with another confrontation between Raven, Starfire, and the other Titans. Raven and Starfire take the time, once they're clear of their friends, to sit down and tell each other everything about themselves, in the hopes that doing so will allow them to control each other's powers. And it works. When they go to confront the Puppet King again, they are in better control of each other's abilities, and that is a real benefit. They are able to fight off the other Titans long enough to save the puppets from being destroyed, and even destroy the Puppet King's controller in the same weird magic blue fire that he intended to destroy the puppets in. Which, thankfully, somehow restores everyone to their original bodies, and also turns the Puppet King into a puppet, because He's been an enchanted puppet this entire time? What? This doesn't make sense. Who made him? If he's a puppet with some sort of weird person's soul in it, then who made him? Was there, like, originally a guy with these powers or this magical ability and he put his soul in this puppet so he'd, like, remain alive forever or something? We don't know. We're never told. It's just so annoying because at the end of the day, the concept for this character is really interesting, but I have trouble enjoying this character, even if just as a villain, because nothing about him makes sense. I mean, holy crap, they are so super lucky that destroying that controller fixed everybody and it didn't doom them to life as puppets and or each other forever. It's just this show is always at its best when the writers find a character or an aspect from the existing comic book lore to use to supplement a well-written episode. Which is not what this episode does at all. This episode does effectively the exact opposite of that. Seemingly crafting this nonsense character to fit a plot that otherwise wouldn't have worked. And I don't like that. I think that's bad writing. But like I said, there are still really good things about this episode. The character interactions between Raven and Starfire were fantastic, and the episode does end on a scene which at least suggests that this will have a lasting impact on the show. When Starfire shows up to meditate along with Raven, and Raven suggests that after they do, they should go hang out together at the mall. Not to mention that the animation on Raven and Starfire's faces was perfect. You could look at Raven in Starfire's body and see Raven's expressions on her face. And vice versa. In short, you could literally see them inside of each other. It was perfect. And I did like that at the end, when Raven and Starfire go to save their friends, getting their own original bodies back is kind of an afterthought. They're more concerned with their friends' safety, which goes to show just how heroic these characters actually are. All of that was really good, it's just the framing device for this episode left a lot to be desired, and I think drags it down. But I'm sure there are some of you out there who feel exactly the opposite that I do, who really love this episode, and I would love to hear from you. So as per usual, I'd like to know what did you guys think of this episode of Teen Titans, if you have seen it. Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below, or over on my Discord, link in the description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.